Greetings, beloved. Welcome to Narrowgate Channel, another beautiful day our Father God has made. We are rejoicing and we are glad in it. Hallelujah. The joy of the Lord is our strength. I welcome those who just joined Narrowgate Channel. Let us learn together. It's operation. Give Jesus your 100%. In 2023, beloved, the door of the ark is closing. The onus lies on individuals. If you want to be part of the ark, you have to run for your life. Our Father is wrapping up. He said, Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. We serve a powerful God, beloved, the great I am, the one and only risen king. In him are hid all the treasures of knowledge and wisdom. Hallelujah. I'm going to share this beautiful message, beloved, that the spirit of our father gave me this morning and i believe it will bless you the same way that it has blessed me bridging the gap beloved between the law and grace our father taught us a lot about laws beloved and today we see the beauty of it that is why this week we are fasting that's why as women, we do not offer that sacrifice to our father when we are on monthly flow. Not because we are scared of being condemned to hell. No, because we want to offer a clean sacrifice to our father. Because we love and honor him. If there are certain things that we cannot do because we are having our monthly flows, why then? Should we offer a sacrifice unto our father at that time? When his word says that we are unclean at that time. So there is a Lord that he has taught us. We do not wear men's garment, beloved. Because he said it's an abomination for a woman to wear that which pertains a man. So we do it, beloved, to honor him to love him, to obey him. Not because we are scared of being condemned to hell. Because we understand that when he said it's an abomination, he knew that there will be consequences of doing that. Praise the name of the Lord. And our father taught us again, beloved, that if he were to judge us according to those laws, none of us will make heaven. But still, we appreciate what he has taught us. Today, we are well covered, beloved. Not only physically, spiritually as well. By allowing him to guide us and to give us knowledge. He has granted us knowledge, beloved. That not everything that is surrounding us is good for us. And we know that we are living under grace by faith through Jesus Christ. So you tell me, and I've asked this question before in that video or titled No More Restrictions or Our Father Has Lifted All the Restrictions. I said, if we are under grace, why there are many souls that are still being condemned to hell? And this is what I want to cover today, beloved, bridging that gap. Yes, our Father is not going to judge us according to some of those laws. But still, even under grace, souls are being condemned to hell. So we can see clearly, beloved, that there is a gap in between. That is why during the time when our father was teaching us laws, many people came here in the comment section. Some, they made videos saying that these people are legalistic. They did not understand. And us who have been through the journey, we see the beauty of it. That's why you see I'm sitting here. I am covered. Because our father taught us well. The beauty of it, that it's not only physical, it is spiritual as well. And that is the knowledge that he has granted us. That's why today I do not take any medication. I am well. That is why the word of God says in the book of 
Uh, Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Praise the name of the Lord. By being obedient, beloved, I am enjoying the benefits of living under the protection of our Father. That is why I can sit here and declare that I fear nobody. Whatever the message that he gives, I will deliver it. Because I am under his wings. Because I am obedient to his word. I do not pull up scriptures and say, Oh no, Father, but you said these things are no longer important. No, I obey. And I see the beauty of it each and every single day. Yes, we are under grace, beloved. Why people are living in bondage? People are living in bondage of sicknesses, diseases, sin. They are bound. They are being terrorized by demons each and every day. Because they are refusing knowledge. That's what the word of God says in Hosea 4, 6. They are perishing, going to hell each and every day. Today, I want us to look at some scriptures, beloved, before I go to uh, the book of John, which is what the spirit of our father gave me this morning. Most of us who have been obeying our father in this journey, beloved, we have heard it a lot uh, through comment section, some releasing videos, beloved, calling us all sorts of names, legalistic, we are from the devil, this and that, God is not interested on what you eat, some they will say God is not interested on what you wear, so many things, and it's because they do not know him. If they truly know him, beloved, they will know that God is interested in everything pertaining to our lives. From what we eat, what we drink, what we say, what we wear, he is interested in everything. The decisions that you take, where you stay, everything. He's a personal God. He's a good father. How can he qualify to be a father if he does not care how you look? If he does not care what you eat? So he wouldn't be a good father. But he is a good father. That is why he cares. But beloved, many, they do not know him. That is why they will utter such words. And they called Paul a lot. Paul said we are no longer under laws, we are under grace. But in most cases, beloved, they lacked understanding. And I understand that's why Father has to first teach us. Because even ourselves, that's what we believe. That those laws are no longer applicable. Some of us never even bothered to read. I want to read the word of God from the book of Romans, chapter 7. I will read verse 7. The word of God says, What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nine. I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. That was Paul, beloved. He said he did not know sin if it wasn't for the law. So even though we are under grace, beloved, the laws are still guiding us and governing us each and every day. He said, I wouldn't have known lust if the word of God did not say, thou shall not covet. And the word of God says that Covetousness will not inherit the kingdom of God in Revelation chapter 21 verse 8. So you can see that Paul now and then he will go back to the law because he said that without law he did not know sin. When you read again in the book of Romans chapter 2 
The word of God says that God has put his law into our hearts. We are born with it. That is why a child will know that stealing is not good. That's why they will do it in hiding. A man who has never been taught that adultery is a sin, he wouldn't do it in front of his wife. He will hide it. Even though nobody told him. But because God has put his law in our hearts, he knows in his heart that what he's doing is not right. He is betraying his wife. So there is no escape because God gave us a conscience. That's why a person cannot go and kill another person while everyone is watching. That's why a person will not go and bewitch another person or cast a spell while everyone is watching. They will do it in hiding. Because the conscience inside is telling them that it is wrong. It is not supposed to be done. He has put his law in our hearts. That's why we are able to know the good from bad. So yes, there are some laws that God is not going to judge us according to. But we did not throw the law completely because without it, we do not know sin. But it helps us to understand and appreciate grace even more. Yesterday I shared about observing uh, the Sabbath. Whether we should or whether we should not. And I shared there through scriptures that Jesus, he pointed it to us. That even those who are observing the Sabbath, even then during his time, they were not observing it the way God intended or the way God required. Therefore, he granted us mercy. Praise the name of the Lord. So beloved, this message of today, I want us to pay attention again. That yes, Father showed us that if he were to judge us according to the laws, none of us will go to heaven. And yes, now we are under grace. Why are we still suffering? Why are we still under bondage? Why are people still trooping to hell? Obviously, there is something that is missing. Even those who are saying we are under grace, we are not supposed to do anything. They are under the deception of the enemy. That is what the Bible says, that he deceived the whole world. The enemy is a way of grace. That's why he had to go and devise a plan of how to keep us in bondage, even with grace, even with the word of God. Because many, they will say, just read the word of God. But I am telling you now, you will read it and read it and read it, and you will still don't understand. That's why I normally say to few people, that I share with face to face. I said, find out from your pastor what is the understanding of this scripture and this scripture, some prophecies. Ask them. Even themselves, they don't know. We are living under the deception of the enemy, even with grace. That is the truth. I want to read what Paul said in the book of uh, Romans chapter 3 verse 10. He said, as it is written. So Paul, he is saying, as it is written, meaning this has been written somewhere. There is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. That is the word of God in the book of Romans chapter 3 verse 10 
up to 12. Just as I have shared yesterday, beloved, about the Sabbath, that even those who were keeping it, they were not keeping it the way God intended. So Paul is quoting what is written in the book of Psalm chapter 14. And I will read from verse 1. The word of God says, The fool hath said in his heart, There is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. That is what Paul said. Verse 2. The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. They are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. That is in Psalm 14. That is what Paul was referring to when he said, it is written, there is none righteous. So they were all filthy. They did not have the understanding. And none of them were seeking God. Yet Christ had to come and die for us. That's why he said, I will have mercy, not sacrifice, in Matthew chapter 12. So none was good. All of them sinned, including our time. We have all sinned and come short of glory of God. And we can see, beloved, throughout the journey that our Father has been taking us, that even under grace, we could see that we were still hell bound because there were lots of things that we were doing that we were not even aware of. I will now go to the book of John chapter 16. This was Jesus promising the Holy Spirit to the disciples. I'm not going to read all of it from the beginning. I will read from verse 7. He said, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. He said it is expedient. It is important for you. It is for your advantage that I go. Because if I do not go, the comforter will not come. So he has to go that the comforter must come unto us. Praise the name of the Lord. And beloved, the oneness of God is a mystery. I will share with you something towards the end of the video. Something that our father uh, said to me this morning. And I believe it is in line with what I am sharing. Praise the name of the Lord. Verse 8. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. This is powerful. He continued, he said in verse 9, of sin because they believe not on me. Jesus said it is expedient that he go away. Because if he go not away, the comforter will not come. And then he said, but if I depart, I will send him unto you. And three things that the spirit of God will be doing here on earth. He said he will reprove the world of sin. Then in verse 9, he said, because they believe not on me. And beloved, the spirit of our father has been reproving the world of sin. Ever since he started giving us messages. And the world is rejecting his messages. They are not believing his messages. 
Jesus said, the comforter, Holy Spirit, we reprove the world of sin. They do not want to hear that whatever they're doing, it's a sin before the Lord. They will protest. They will bring so many excuses. But Jesus said that the comforter, when he come here on earth, he will prove the world of sin. And indeed, our father revealed that we are living under the deception of the enemy. And he's still revealing all the dark secrets of the enemy. Previously, we just bought things unconsciously, whatever you want. You want flowers, you want uh, gold and silver, you want all these things we just bought. But our father has granted us knowledge. Let us continue. Verse 10, it says, of righteousness, because I go to my father and ye see me no more. Verse 11, of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. That is why, beloved, he has no mercy. His three missions are in John 10, 10. He is ruthless. He is vicious. Because he has been judged, he has no future anymore. He knows that the lake of fire is waiting for him. Therefore, he is doing whatever it takes to cause humanity to fall and to be condemned in hell. That is why he puts his bait everywhere. That is why he has replaced all the good things that our father has created for us to use and enjoy. He replaced them with his products. This is important, beloved. He said, Jesus said, the spirit of God will reprove the world of sin. Because they believe not on him. And even up to today, they still do not believe. Even when the spirit of God is revealing those areas, they still do not believe. Of judgment because the prince of this world has been judged. And he has no mercy. He is ruthless. He hates us. He is terrorizing people. Our father showed me a sad vision this morning. How the devil is capturing people, using them, and kill them. That is his mission. I will read verse 12. I have yet... Many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Powerful. So Jesus is saying, I have yet many things to tell you, but you cannot bear them now. Beloved, this on its own, it makes us aware that there are things that the comforter will reveal that are not written in the word of God. I will continue to verse 13. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. Powerful. He said when the spirit of truth come, he will guide you to all truth. Meaning, beloved, you can read the word of God from beginning to the end. Without the spirit of God, you will not know the truth. Remember what Jesus said. He said, I have yet many things to say unto you. But you will not be able to bear them now. 
What are those things that Jesus was referring to, beloved? If the word of God contains everything, then what is it that Jesus wanted to tell us that he said that the spirit of truth will guide us to all truth? Beloved, the gap between the law and grace is the spirit of God, Holy Spirit. Remember what Peter said. He said in Acts 2, 38, he said, repent and be baptized and you will receive the gift, the gift that is the gift that our father has given us. Holy Spirit, beloved, you can say that I am under grace and still go to hell, even being under grace. Without the Holy Spirit of God, beloved, you will not know all the truth. That's what Jesus said. He said, I have yet many things to say. But you will not be able to bear them now. So he's telling us that there are some things that will be revealed by Holy Spirit alone. Only him will guide you to the truth. Only him will reveal what is to come. So without the Holy Spirit of God, beloved, you cannot make it because already we are living in this dark and perverse generation where the enemy has polluted everything. That is why when you tell the people that God does not want us to wear black, they will tell you, where is it written? But this is what Jesus said. He said, I have yet many things to say, but you will not be able to bear them. The spirit of truth will reveal all the truth to you. Meaning, even if you read the entire Bible, you will still not have the entire truth. That is why Peter said you will receive the gift. Holy Spirit is a gift from our Father. Without it, you will not make it to his kingdom. Without the Spirit of God, beloved. And remember, in verse 9, he said, the Holy Spirit will reprove the world of sin because they believe not on him. And if you do not believe on what he is teaching us, if you do not believe on what he is revealing, then you will not have the gift of the Holy Spirit, beloved. Because you will not repent. Remember, the word of God says, repent and be baptized. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You have to repent. You have to acknowledge that we are living under the deception of the devil. You have to acknowledge that he has deceived the whole world and allow God to guide you. You have to acknowledge and surrender to him. Then you will receive that gift. And if you do not believe on him, you will not have that gift. And believing is not just to say that I believe that Jesus uh, has, has um, uh, died on the cross for me. Remember, the word of God says, even the, the demons, they believe. It is obeying him, trusting him and obeying him, obeying what he is teaching us through that Holy Spirit that he has promised us. People today, they will tell you, give me a scripture that says I must not wear printed clothes. Jesus said that I have yet many things to show you, to tell you. But you will not be able to bear them. The spirit of truth will guide you to all truth. And indeed, his spirit revealed that those prints are not innocent. They are meant to cause you to fall. But humanity, children of God will fight you. They are looking for reverse. When Jesus himself, he said that there are many things. He did not say everything. No. 
some of the things we will be guided by Holy Spirit. That's why I want us to pay attention. He said, the spirit of truth is come. He will guide you into all truth. So if you believe only on the laws, that will not lead you to the kingdom of our father. If you believe, you just sit and say, I believe in grace. I'm not interested on the laws. That will not take you to our, the kingdom of our father. Because you need the spirit of truth. He is the one who will guide you to all truth. The truth is in him and him alone. Some of the things you will not going to find them on the law or, or the prophets. Some of the things you will not find them after grace. Because Jesus told us clearly that the entire truth will be taught by Holy Spirit. So that is it, beloved. That is why he said, few find this way. Because only few are being guided by Holy Spirit, beloved. And those are the ones that do not argue. Today, you cannot even share to a believer that my sister, that is not right before the Lord. They want you to bring out the verse. That's why I said previously that the devil has deceived us, beloved, even with Bibles in our hands. Yes. Jesus said it. The entire truth is with his spirit, with Holy Spirit. He is the only one who will reveal all truth. That is why he is able to tell us that do not wear black. I had two messages after the relief about black. Our father does not want black, beloved. So if you are still going to wear black and you say it does not matter, you will realize one day that it matters because you do not have the spirit of God, beloved. You want everything to be written in the word of God. But that word of God has told us clearly that all truth will be through Holy Spirit. That's why he can guide us, beloved, that don't do this. Don't go there. You tell them about matters. They say, bring the scripture. That is why they will remain in bondage. It pleases the devil that they are disobedient, beloved. Because all these abominations, they are a snare unto us. All these idols that people do not want to let go of, they are a snare. And they are making the enemies work very easy. It doesn't matter what you say. You say, don't put on this. You know, they don't want to hear it. They know better. Don't wear sensual clothes. They will ask you, bring a scripture that says that. We are under grace. Jesus doesn't care what you're wearing. That pleases the demons, beloved, because you become their target. The spirit of lust will be defiling you whenever it feels like because the door is widely open. The gap between the law and grace is Holy Spirit, beloved. It is a gift and without it, you cannot make it to heaven. Without it, you will continue to argue God's messages. But if you receive him and surrender, his spirit will guide you. That's why I say, if you surrender completely and cry unto him and acknowledge that we are living under deception, you will be surprised what the spirit of God will reveal to you. 
People are happy to live in sorcery. Our father gave Sister Nontobeko a powerful vision about pharmacies. The pharmacies that are selling pharmaceutical drugs. She will share it with us. We are living under the deception, beloved. Repent and acknowledge that we are deceived. Receive him. Then the spirit of truth will guide you to all truth. You will be amazed at what the spirit of God will reveal. Praise the name of the Lord. Beloved, this is for your own good. If you want to make it to heaven, you need the Holy Spirit of God. Without it, you cannot make it. I said I was going to share something towards the end of this video. This is regarding the oneness of God. Beloved, it is a mystery. Jesus said in John 16 verse 7, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Jesus said, I will send him unto you. The oneness of God is a mystery. I know there is a video where I shared about the oneness of God. I want to share with you this experience that I had this morning in line with what I am sharing to you, that it's a mystery, the oneness of God. I had an out-of-body experience this morning. Our father was talking to me as a son of man. But he closed my eyes. My eyes were not open. I have shared it's not all the time that I get to see him. I was just listening to what he was saying. He was asking me, why am I so tired? I said, I don't know. And he said to me, it's because of the company that you keep. I said, Father, but I did not go anywhere yesterday. And he said to me, have you forgotten? And I totally forgot that yesterday morning I went somewhere. He said, have you forgotten where you went yesterday? He said to me, I will open your eyes. Just wait and listen to what Holy Spirit has. And I heard myself talking. The same way you are hearing me talking. I heard myself talking the same way, clearly. And this was not the first time. There are times he will say to me, Holy Spirit told me you were complaining yesterday. And when he is saying that, he's talking to me as a son of man. So that's why I am telling you, beloved, that the oneness of God is a mystery. And sometimes he talks to me as I. He will say to me, I know your thoughts. I saw what you did yesterday. Why did you do that yesterday? And some days, if he's talking to me as a son of man, he will tell me that Holy Spirit told me it's a mystery, beloved. We know and we understand in part. So that's it for this message. I love you all. Stay blessed as we continue to learn. Bye-bye.